What's good team and welcome to today's tutorial where I'm going to share with you the three step note taking strategy that I use to remember everything that I learned. When I was teaching myself to code, there was so, so very much to learn. And so I tried just about every study note taking methodology under the sun. Only three worked for me and I still use them to this very day. Each one serves a slightly different purpose and I'm going to be showing you them all in this video. If you want, you can start incorporating them into your learning workflow and you will never forget anything ever again. My name is James and on this channel, I've taught thousands of people how to code. If you're new here, smash the subscribe button as I upload new learn to code videos every single week. Alrighty, so first on the list is a method that I use to note take when I'm watching a YouTube tutorial or learning from someone's YouTube tutorial. So here I have a React.js project open from a tutorial that I actually made on this channel. And this is exactly how if I were watching this video, I would take notes while learning from the tutorial to make sure I forget absolutely nothing. Now there's a secondary part to this process that we'll discuss after we look at the initial steps. So here we have a whole lot of logic and sometimes logic can be over overwhelming and confusing. Typically, if you've got a good tutor or a good tutorial, they will explain how everything works. But if I just come back and look at this code, let's say I'm learning it for the first time, there's a good chance that this won't make a whole lot of sense. And basically what you want to do is when the tutor says something valuable, a golden knowledge nugget, something that you think makes a lot of sense to you in the moment, you absolutely need to record it in the code base. So let's say here we have the function handle add to do's and the tutor says that the function is used to take a new to do item, recreates the array because react state is immutable and then sets the new state. Suddenly, when I come back to this function, let's say you're learning something specific about react, I might wonder why on earth do I not just directly mutate the to do list array? Now I have the comment that I can always come back and revisit that explains to me exactly how this function works. Likewise, if I were to adapt this project at the end and I wanted to learn how to add additional information, for example, if I made a note taking app, I can see, okay, this function takes a new note. It then recreates the notes array and then sets the new note state. So the moral of the story is that you just want to riddle your code base with all sorts of comments, every valuable thing that the tutor says. This process is also going to reinforce the concepts and methods followed in the tutorial. It might take a bit longer as you go through the code, but it will infinitely pay off in the long term. The second thing you absolutely have to do if you follow this method is upload all of your code to GitHub and give your projects meaningful project names. To this very day, I go back to code repos that I made over two years ago and I have comments left for myself that explain a process. Super important and that way I don't have to figure everything out. It's right there. I made the notes as if I was going to come back to it and look at it later. If you want to learn more about how you can get up and running with GitHub, be sure to check out this video. So that was method one that explains how I take notes to remember everything I learn in tutorials. Super great process I'd recommend doing it from day one all you have to do is learn how to make a comment in that programming language and then you can write them absolutely everywhere the second note-taking technique that I use when learning to code is specifically for larger processes for example let's say I wanted to have a full stack application I wanted to set it up with an authentication system and a database that's a large process that I would have to go through numerous times it's approximately the same every time I do it but it's a lot of steps to remember another example would be if I wanted to deploy a project for example I recently deployed an app to the App Store it's a gym app you could actually go and check it out if you want and it's a surprisingly complicated project to get an app live on the Google App Store that's a process that I would want to record for future me so that I don't have to figure it out every time I do it because that might be infrequently so what I will do whenever I encounter a process a longer process that I want to consolidate to my memory is I'll write a medium article about it I'd recommend creating a Medium account in general because it's a great way to develop your technical writing skills. And once I've created my account, I'll hit write. I'll create a new article and I'll write the article, for example, uh, how to set up authentication and database with React. JS and Firebase, which is actually a tutorial that will be coming to the channel soon. And in here, this could be a step by step guide. 
And what you'll want to do is you'll want to write the article as if you were explaining the process to somebody else. Not only will this help to reinforce the concept and the process in your mind, because explaining a process or teaching it to someone else will help make sure you understand even the most minute steps of the process that will absolutely reinforce it in your head. But furthermore, 10 years later, you could come back, revisit the article. And if you've gone through everything comprehensively, for example, step one might be to init the project. Step two is to init Firebase, so on and so forth. If you've gone through the whole thing comprehensively, you can come back, you have a step-by-step -step guide, and it's basically consolidated to your mind, even if you refer to the guide in future. So to summarize step two, whenever you have a longer process that you want to remember, write an article for it. It's such a beneficial experience, and you might even get some internet clout, some fame and fortune monetize your medium account it's an absolutely brilliant thing to do now my last method which is my absolute favorite is for things that aren't practical project-based tutorials it's just a whole lot of knowledge that you have to absorb and remember and essentially the strategy is to open up vs code create a new project directory with a notes folder and in here you use markdown which is a formatting language to write the ultimate set of notes Markdown is so cool. If you're not familiar with the formatting language, it's just a very basic syntax that you can use to make amazing looking documents, information documents. If you want to watch a short tutorial, there's one linked in the description down below to learn Markdown. And here is an example. We have some HTML and CSS course notes. And basically, as I was learning, everything I learned, I piled down into this document. All the steps creating an html document once again as if i were teaching it to someone else now this is not everything in html it's just a very consolidated concise version of all the things that i deem most critical i understand it i write it from my head i don't just translate it or paraphrase it from a different resource I write everything out from scratch and that will absolutely burn it into my mind branded there for all of eternity furthermore i make a markdown file for every different set of notes that i have so here there's a whole lot of them i have one on deployment docker github html css javascript node and all that good stuff all the really foundational things make a set of notes as if you were making it for someone else but secretly it's for you and it's also great that you can refer back to although chances are going through this process you won't have to refer back to it because you'll have learned it regardless now the second half to this is to once again deploy it to github the main reason i recommend doing this is because they just so happen to have a really cool markdown interpreter so here github basically interprets the markdown syntax and makes our document look all pretty and readable so we can see we've got code sections quotes header tags bullet points, lists, tables, just about everything. In either format, it's extremely readable. It's all saved in the cloud so I can access it on any device. And even further, Markdown is even cooler because I could actually create a website that passes those Markdown documents. For example, here it is. And now we actually have these HTML and CSS notes inside of a website. So the sky is the limit in terms of what you could do with these resources once you've created them. Markdown is so incredibly simple and this process is absolutely brilliant. If there's just a topic that you want to remember, it could be biology, chemistry, physics, literature, history. I absolutely recommend creating the ultimate set of notes inside of a notes directory. Simple as creating a folder and having a sub markdown file, the .md is the markdown suffix or extension, and creating the ultimate course guide summary notes that you wish you had when you were first learning the material. Try to explain it as comprehensively as if you were teaching it to someone else because that is truly how you learn. If you can understand a concept to the point where you can teach it to someone else and make it seem simple, you'll have such a strong neural network inside of your brain that it will be there for all of eternity. And just like that, those are the three study techniques that I use to remember everything that I learn. The first one is making incredible comments as I go throughout a tutorial for project-based learning. It's absolutely critical. It helps me further understand all the core steps inside of the tutorial. And not to mention when I save it to GitHub, it's there for me forever. Method number two is to create a Medium account and write really comprehensive articles for any longer processes that you just have to remember, such as deployment, full stack authentication, how to create a Python virtual environment. There's loads of examples. And the last one is to create a folder that you save to GitHub. We have numerous markdown files where each markdown file contains the ultimate summary guide of that particular topic. 
best if you can write it from memory as that's how you'll really consolidate the knowledge but sometimes you might want to throw an extra bit of research into there just to make them even more comprehensive as always if you've enjoyed the video smash the like and subscribe buttons love that support and i'll catch you guys later peace learning to code if so be sure to check out the learn to code roadmap or dive straight in with these videos that's a good one